Hi, this is David. The last two videos introduced you to a tool called MinIO, which is a data server that is deployed, can be deployed in the cloud and manage your uh, unstructured data and objects. Uh, here I'm going to show you how to programmatically access that tool using the Java SDK. Our goal is going to be to take this file right here, test.txt. If I open it up, you'll see that it just has the word hello world in there. And I wanted to upload it to a min.io server and then download it from that. Do that all programmatically through the Java SDK. Now, I'm going to go through some things quickly here. Um, if you have trouble, you can always go back and look at uh, the details in these videos. So, for example, I'll cover the min.io server, which if you don't if you have trouble following it, just watch video 94. Four. Um, if you uh, you want to look at, I'm going to talk a little bit about Java services. I covered that in video 84, and then I'll also show about getting started with a Spring Boot application, which you can find more details here in video 81. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a new MinIO server, and I'll do that through PowerShell. I'll come right in here, and the command to do that, I'll cheat it right here. I'm going to say docker run because I'm going to create this in a docker container. I'll expose it on port 9000. Here's a couple of environmental variables, the access key and the secret key. I'm going to just use my access key and my secret key. And that's the actual arguments. The minio server slash data tells it to create that. So I'll, let me grab that and paste it into here and run that. And that will create a minio server, which I can access here on port 9000 through a web browser, for example. Let me copy that and go into my browser and open it up right. Actually, I open up in a private window right there, like that, and log it in through my access keys, which were access key was my access key and the secret was my secret key. So my access key and my S-E-C-R-E-T key right there. Create that, and there we go. I have an empty min.io server here. There are no buckets, there's no files, and so on. So that's what I want to do. Um, let me now next create a Spring Boot application. And I can do that the way that I like to do it. Just go to the Spring Initializer here, and I'll call it uh, Gcast. Uh, min io sdk um, com dot gcast. How about that? It's all good. Dem demo project for sdk uh, with min io. That sounds good. I don't really need any dependencies. I'm just going to generate this right here. Open that up and extract it all to, I've got a folder on here called Gcast, right there. I don't think there's anything in that folder, so I'll select that one and extract it all right to there. All right, so now I can right click here. Uh, no, I can't right click here. I have to open up Visual Studio Code or whatever your preferred IDE is and open that folder that I just created. Here, and there'll be just a little bit of boilerplate code in here that was generated by that spring starter kit. Most notably, I'm gonna have, uh, let's, let's just say yes to these things here. Make it a little bit easier to work with Java. right here, and you'll see that the only real code in here is this application right here. I also have a POM XML file, so that's important. I'm gonna, I need to add, this is using Maven, so I need to add a dependency for this min.io SDK. And the way I do that is from right here, I'm gonna add this dependency right here. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'll put this all in GitHub here so you can grab this code later. Um, the way I learned this, by the way, is I went to min.io and selected docs right here. 
and most of what I learned about this is from here. In fact, if I want to look at the Java SDK, I want to scroll down to the MinIO SDKs. You can see there's a bunch of SDKs here, including the Java Client API reference and the Java Client Quick Start Guide. Great places to start. Okay, where was I? I've added this right here. I can close. Uh, it says uh, build files modified. Let's update it. That'll pull down the dependencies for MinIO. And then I'll close that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I want to create a couple of uh, services, a service and a component to do this here. This is a static. So it's, it's difficult in Java to call a, a non-static class from a static method and so there is a way to do that so let me just do that i'm going to grab in here and i'll create a, i like to create folders here even though i'm only going to have one i'll create one called services and i'll create one called components and what i'll do is the first thing i'll do is i'll create this service i'll say a new file and i'll call it the min io service.java right here it's a class and I've got some code right here that I learned from reading all this stuff and I am going to paste that code in it'll have two methods one to write to min.io and one to read from min.io so let me go ahead and paste that in here right here, a couple of public methods. All these squiggly lines say that it doesn't understand what invalid key exception is, what min.io client is. Well, if I hit control dot on here and wait for it to refresh a second, and it should allow, suggest an import statement. And it knew that because of what I put in POM XML, a new min.io was available to me. So let's do that. These things right here, actually, access key and storage account key, I want to add those at the top. So let me make sure I did that. These are just some constants. I'll put those at the top of my class. So I know the endpoint, the access key, I called it my access key, uh, secret key is my secret key, a bucket, I'm gonna store everything into a bucket, and then the location of the files to upload are C backslash test backslash files, which I just showed you is right here. All right. So that's what I'm doing here. What else here? I want to uh, just hit control dot a few times to add all these import statements. Anytime I see a squiggly line, that's probably what's going on here. There's an exception right there. Need to import that. And a few more. Okay, let's walk through this code. Here I'm going to create a min.io client. This is the, I'm going to pass in the credentials, which is the access key and the secret key. I really should call that secret key, key right there. Rename that. So here I'm going to actually create this min.io client. Uh, here I'm going to use that min.io client to see if a bucket exists. The bucket I'm interested in is called my bucket. Of course it won't exist because there's, um, I just created this. Looks like I have a couple more import statements to cover here. Right there, that's good. So the first time I run that, this will return false. And if I say if it's false, then go ahead and create it. So there we're going to create it. I don't need a print line right there, I don't think. Um, and then I will uh, upload the file. I told it was called uh, text, actually. I could probably just pass get that from the arguments passed in. File name right here. And I want to append that to the local file folder, C backslash test backslash files, so that's where it is. And um, then right here, in order to upload it, 
the client has an upload object method and I need to pass in the upload object args which I'm going to create right here using this upload object args builder I tell it what bucket to put it in what's the name of the file uh, etc so there it is right there and then I just output the results here to the print line and catch an exception that occurred reading from same code here I'm going to create this client and I'm going to download it from min.io into the same folder, but I'll just prepend it with d underscore file name. So if it's called, what was it called, test, I think? Test.txt, it'll be d underscore test.txt. And the, just like there was the client had a, a, uh, up here an upload object, this, it also has a download object. And instead of taking upload object args, it takes a download object args, which I've instantiated right here. And here it is. I use this builder to say it's in this bucket. It's That's the file name. And this is where I'm going to download it to, etc. Dot build. And then this is just output to output. So this is my code. This is essentially using the Java SDK to run this. And all I really need to do is to wire it up. I want to call it when the application runs. Here's the code that was generated, the one line of code that was generated by the Spring Starter Kit. Um, and what I want to do to make this work is I'm going to create a component, new file. I'll call it, um, what am I going to call this? Uh, how about uh, min i o component dot java right here. And that is a class. And the code for doing that is right here. I'm going to have a method called read write min io. It's going to call those two methods. So right here, read write min io now it doesn't know what min io service is i want to declare that private min i i o what did i call that one i want it to be that type min io service name will be min io service right here and the way that i I want, Spring has a way of auto wiring these, which I've covered in another video, and I'll just say um, auto wire. Oops, auto wired right there, right here, and make sure that I get the correct import statement. Definitely not this one. Right here. Let's start with this right here. Import that here, and it looks like that's good. Yep, I have that. Auto wired is in there. All right, and uh, I've got a couple things here. Min IO service. What's wrong with that? Change to min IO service is it looks like I've spelled them differently. So I want to make sure that I do that the same. Oh, here I want to min IO service. Whatever that is has to be spelled the same here. Min IO service, min IO service. There we go. And it's going to throw this exception right here. Or it's potentially it could. In fact, all three of these exceptions could be thrown by that component. So I need to do that. All right, so now I've wired it up. As soon as this thing is instantiated, it, this, this class is instantiated, it'll auto wire min IO service populating that variable with a new instance of this class right here. And now that I have that class, I'm just going to call those two methods, write to min.io and read from min.io. So it'll upload from my local c backslash files backslash test.txt into min.io service, put it in this, create this bucket and place it in there, and then it'll read that and download it, that file and download it to my local file system with a d underscore in front of it. And the only other thing I have to do now is just to tell my application to call this component. And so right here, after I instantiate this, what I want to do is the way we can do that, I don't have a video on this, but I think I'll write a blog post in the next few days, 
is I wanted to do something like this. Um, I'll add, this actually has a return value of type application context. I'll call it application context equals. And then what I'll do is I'll grab these things here. So the file name is going to be test.text. And I am going to call application context.get bean and pass in this. And get bean will work because I have this min.io demo. Or not min.io demo, min.io component it should be called. Min.io component. Because I've decorated that with, or I meant to decorate that with the at component class right there. That automatically put the import up there. That's good. All right. So because of that, now min.io component, let's see. And min.io component, it looks like I may have spelled them differently. Min.io component versus, look like I have a case issue here. Then I a component, there we go. And import that. So once I have this application context here, I can use that to get a bean, and a bean would be any class that's decorated with that component attribute. And now once I have this men I a component right here, I have this one method in here read write min io i'm just going to call that so min io min io component dot read write oops got to be lowercase min io component dot read write and file name is the file name is that right here and That should work. I think you have to add some throws to that because, yeah, there we go. Add throws declaration. So because this method could potentially throw something, then I have to tell this method to watch to be able to catch these uh, potential exceptions. And then I'll, I do like to do this output something to let me know that I'm done right here. System.out.println done. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Let's let's set a breakpoint right here. We'll grab the application context and we'll get to here in the application right before we call read write min io. So let me do that. Press F five. And I have an exception. And the exception says that uh, min.io service could not be found. So what's happening is that right in here, in my component, it's trying to do this min.io service here. I'll auto-wire it, but it couldn't find it here. And the reason is because I didn't decorate this with at service right there. Okay. Let's try that again. Run, start debugging. And now it is running just fine. So let me, if I'm in the application, the main method of the application, I'm going to step into this right here that wired up just fine. Uh, and now I'm going to step into uh, right to min.io, make sure min.io service is a class it is step into that and we can see right here let's just step over there's only a few lines here so first we'll create the client using this builder with those credentials we'll check if the bucket exists 
it's brand new so should it does not exist false so then it says if not bucket exists then make bucket step over that that's good so now if I go back to here I should actually see in here I guess I didn't do this this is or wait no it's here in here I did do it and if I refresh this I should now see a bucket in here called my bucket there it is now, there's no files yet because I haven't done this yet now I want to grab the file to upload which is going to be c backslash test backslash files backslash test dot text that's that file that just says hello world in it and now I create some args and then upload the object using those args and I'll refresh again just by clicking on my bucket and there it is right there it was uploaded programmatically let's go ahead and just output some information here and that's all awesome all right, now we're going to step into the read from. This will download it. Again, we create a client right here using these credentials. These credentials probably should be in maybe in an environment variables or something like that. Uh, this isn't the most secure thing, but it's a demo. Uh, download to the local folder, c backslash test backslash files, but we're going to name it d underscore test so it doesn't overwrite our original file. Generate these args and then call download object. Pass in those args. And now once we do that, now if I go to files, there's a second file right there. And just just like this one's it's a text file, it has it looks exactly the same as that, just a different name. And then I just output information here, no errors occurred, and then walk back up the stack here until I say done. Can resume. There it is, it's done. And that's it. I'll put this code on GitHub with a link to it in the show notes. This is David. I've just shown you how to use the Java SDK to interact with Min.io to upload a file and to read and download a file. Thank you for watching.